Child labor in Nigeria is the employment of children under the age of 18 in a manner that restricts or prevents them from basic education and development. Poverty is said to be one of the major factors that drive child labor in Nigeria. In poor families, child labor is a major source of income for the family and it is said to promote child trafficking. On the show today, we'll be looking at some of these issues. We have uh, two guests with us in the studio, Bukola Akiwale. She is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for coming in. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Coincidentally, we also have another Bukola, but this time she is a Lamid, a family life therapist. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining Thank us. Good to have you, ladies. So first and foremost, we like to lay the foundation for this conversation. A lot of people do not know the difference between child labor and child trafficking does one lead to the other do they work hand in hand now you're a legal practitioner so i'll start with you book number one okay. <laughs> as a legal practitioner we know the child's right to act has been domesticated by a few states but nigeria was one of the first countries to sign you know to bring that in so what does the constitution say about child labor okay. and trafficking Thank you very much. Okay, first of all, we need to talk from the Constitution, mm -hmm. the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, because that's where we get all of our laws from. Okay, so the Constitution says that a child is a person under the age of 18, yes, and the ch um, then it follows the Child's Rights Act, which is a, an enactment ensured under the 1999 Constitution, and it says that a child is any person under the age of 18. Now, what is child labor? Child labor is the employment of anyone under the age of 18 in such a way that affects their social development, basic education, and affects their physical and mental health. Hmm. Now, child trafficking is when you remove a child from the care of their parents and take them away into another place, and then you employ them. Whether you're paying them or not, you're employing them to do something. And that thing, so now this is where we draw a distinction because this is Nigeria we're in, and we need to know um, how to draw the distinction. So many of us are very, very familiar with this. We, most of us have maids in our it's houses. It's become like a practice of yes, sorts. Yes, yes. And you can't really fault these families too because some of them, they have so many children. They, don't know, they can't take care of them. So what do you do? You ask one of them to go to live with somebody else. You know, the Child's Rights Act make it um, it's a criminal offense for you to take a child and use that child for labor. Mm. But in a situation where you are not affecting the education of that child, it is no longer is not going to constitute a crime in that case. So if you have someone in your house like that and you're sending them to school and you're not making them to work in such a situation that would affect their mental and physical health, then it's at least it's still accepted. Okay, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm going to take the question okay. to you. It, it's arising from what she just said about the distinction between, you know, child labor and um, okay. having trafficking and then uh, the maid situation. Could you expatiate on that based on your background and, of course, follow that up with where exactly are we? Oh, thank you so much. Let me start from where you ended from. We are nowhere when it comes to asking that where exactly are we. You know, we are in a confused state. We don't even know. A lot of people don't even know that anyone between the um, um, a child, someone between zero and 18 is a child. Okay. So you would find even in immediate families, people are actually abusing their own children. Mm. You will see teenagers who are responsible for the younger ones. Teenagers that are even supposed to be children are being abused even in their family. So that's why I said we are nowhere right now. I'm a family life therapist and I realize that Apart from the fact that they have taken away basic, basic education from children, they're even taking away their childhood. And that is very, very important. We are seeing that children are doing catch up. We want children to quickly develop into mm. an adult and it's affecting them mentally. It's, affect, it's taking away their privileges of childhood. It's taking away their memories of childhood. And there is no how, if you take childhood away from children, it will catch up with them. That's why you see a lot of men beaters. We do a lot of counseling and we realize that most men, be, uh, wife beaters, sorry, most yeah, of them, their childhood were taken away from them. Mm. They, um, you know, they push adulthood quickly to them. Mm. So they became very responsible at a very tender age. So they, they are playing catch up. So they are, you know, the emotions are so bad is hiding in their bodies and is making them to become violent in okay. their own Just age. before um, uh, Marianne comes in, I want you to make um, a realistic summation 
so to speak, of where we are at. What's the, she made mention of child abuse, uh, maid. How do we draw the line? When do we know we've crossed it to child abuse, even though we're trying to give aid to children? Thank you. How do you know it? What is an abuse? Abuse is something that is causing harm mentally, emotionally, physically. And when you say physical, it's education. When you don't allow a child to thrive, that's emotional. So that is where people don't know when to draw the line. They believe, like I said, children, they just believe that they are old. You know, they are old to take care of themselves. That is where the abuse comes in. So that's where people don't draw the line. I have a maid in my house. She's um, 17. And when they brought her, I told them that she can't. I'm just going to send her to school because I'm a child protection advocate and I cannot see myself. My first child is 15. So I'm trying to look at how can I say, okay, you go and do all this kind of hard labor. But a lot of people don't understand that. In fact, we try to, you know, take care of our own, but because the, these others don't at a, a, a disadvantage, we now try to abuse them. So we are not trying to project that. What you cannot do to your child, you shouldn't do to another child just mm. because they are at a disadvantage or they are more vulnerable. All right, just like she said, for some people, I'm helping you. Your parents couldn't send you to school. Exactly. I'm sending you to school. Exactly. So you owe me. You're supposed to pay exactly. me back. And that means you clean my house. That's you take care of title. my children. And know the fact that this child is not getting any payment. Exactly. The money is not going to the child. The money is going to the parent yes. or the traffickers, so those who actually. Even pay. The, person, the person who brought them. So they are not even seeing it as they are doing anything for you. They are seeing it as you are abusing them. I, I want to come back to you because you're the family therapist. The issue, I want to know where we started all of this because... <laughs> our society has somewhat made it okay. The Aquibom State Government at some point had to bastardize, not bastardize, criminalize, I beg your pardon, the whole houseboy syndrome yeah. because it was... Prevalent. Uh, yes, they were taking it out. It was literally, it was a stamp on the faces of the people from that region that, oh, that's what they were good for. So it was now criminal for you to take a child to live with you. They had to... But then, in Nigeria, if we were to stamp that out, where do we even start from? Because, for example, my auntie dies, and she has a 10-year-old daughter. And then there's nobody to take care of her, so they look for one of those people to send the child off to. And the woman doesn't prioritize that child's education, number one. Number two, oh, well, I have an extra hand so she can cook and clean, and she's 10 years old. Where did we start making this a send me your child to live with me, and then before you know it, she's assuming the duty of a, a house help. Well, I would say child trafficking has been on for ages. In fact, in the days of the Bible and all that, we've always seen people taking children to go and do stuff like this. But I would say that everything would, I started from grassroots. You know, when you said um, poor families, most of them are the ones that does all this child labor and trafficking and all that. If we could just try to give them the basic thing, that is the education. Because most of these issues started from culture. Mm. Some culture believes that's what I was a looking woman for. Is, is a culture that is aiding and abating yeah, so this? It's more or less like there was something that happened recently where a 15 year old girl was, you know, given to marriage. We're and, actually you know, talking yeah. about that before you came. Earlier on. It happened yes. in Anambra State. We were asking. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I think she was part of the team that said no. I think it happened in Enugu and we had to do our background checks and we ensured that the girl was um, taken out of that marriage. So when we look at this real situation of what happened, we realize that it was poverty. Okay, was poverty that made quickly them before I come to you, because I want you to tell me what the, the, the Constitution says about it. In a bit to say, um, for example, when I was young, I didn't know how to do anything. Literally, couldn't sweep, couldn't clean, couldn't do nothing because I was a sport child. Now. In a bid for you to try to teach a child, maybe for example, like I'm holidaying with one of my aunts, and they say you have to sweep, clean, wash. How do you know not where to draw the lines so that it doesn't become labor? Because at some point, in, you're saying I want, to, I'm trying to make you into a wife, a good wife. I hear that all the time, mm. so that a good man will come and marry you. Like that's all that you need to get married. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you draw the line? In a bid to try to teach a child to be very ha homely or wifely. And that's why I said that we, are, we need a lot of education to do. It's coming, everything is going back to our culture. We believe the girls are supposed to do all the home chores and all that. But then we advocate for age appropriate 
chores for children. What are those age-appropriate chores? So we have, from the age of three, a child can start doing some house chores. So we have age-appropriate. We have three to five, what they can do. Then six to nine, what they can do. Nine to 11, what they can do. Then 12, teenage. Can you specify? Because mothers yeah. are watching. Okay, for instance, People for, are watching. for between a three-year-old and five, what they can do is to scatter the house, right? <laughs> so you just give them a walk, put this in the drawer, put this in the drawer. That's all. It's work. Even for a mother to start putting their clothing in their closet, they will enjoy it. <clears throat> nothing more, nothing less. Then from age five to nine, Okay, can you help me pick a spoon? Go and get me the cup. Go and get me the broom. It's a chore. Hmm. They will enjoy it. But by the time you start imprinting those things in their system, they will understand that it is not punishment. Because to most children, they see it as punishment rather than, you know, normal mm -hmm. chore. They mm -hmm. see. So you need to let them have the understanding that it is just part of what we, you know, follow you into adulthood so by the time you start instilling it one after the other then i we train um, parents on how to delegate don't say this is a girl's job this mm. is a boy's so job boys, the boys are so not you have kitchen. to swap when you wash today the, the other one should wash the next day so you will not stereotype that washing of plates or cooking of meals is done by a particular gender so that will grow with them and they will understand that at this particular age, this is what they're supposed to do. So you would have accumulated all the chores, you know, without broken them down. It's not as if you have bombarded them with everything. So by a three to five, they are doing something. Five to nine, they're doing something. Then nine to 12, they're doing something too. So it will come naturally to them. We've tested it and we've seen it work. All right. Um, I would love to come to you and ask the question. Uh, we're in an electionary, um, uh, era the the campaign well, is it's just a week on. away <laughs> uh, yes it's on and in very high gear mm -hmm. could you tell us what the law says about this about child child labor, labor and child mm -hmm. abuse and then could you chip in in your thoughts is the child captured in all the campaign going across mm -hmm. board in this election okay thank you the section 34 of the 1999 constitution says that no person including children should be forced into labor so you know like what we were discussing you could see so a situation like that as forced labor so it's a thing of the mind yes. <laughs> let's start from there yeah. but then nevertheless section 28 subsection 1 of the child's rights act says that no child should be forced into labor of any kind. Now, the problem we have is that the Child's Rights Act is under the residual list. So because of that, it is something that has to be legislated upon by the state. Mm. So each state has to incorporate it into their laws in order for it to be active in their state. So as it is now, our challenge is that we ask these people coming into the government, what are they going to do? So most of the states have them. I think we have 23 states that has already incorporated it into their laws. Yeah. But it's Adamawa, Bochi, I think I have them here. Yes, Bonu, I also have them Gombe, here. Kaduna. That have not. That have not, that have not implemented it. Yes, yes. It, and so. it's because of the cultural Culture, yeah, yes, and the say. religious aspect of it. I want to finish your question. So. Um, that's what the law says. And then section 28 subsection and um, section 28 of the Child's Rights Act, now once it's incorporated into a state law, mm -hmm. says that any person who forces a child into forced labor is liable to five years imprisonment. Now, is it being enforced? That's another issue. Mm -hmm. You understand? So because majority majority of people are guilty of this. Then the reason that I'm even skeptical about this thing is that this is a cultural thing. This is a cultural thing, and if something is a culture, it's a person's way of life. Mm. It is you, t it's like my mother told me something since I was born. You coming in to tell me something different is incongruous with what I've been thought. Okay. So I see you as the evil person. Not to interrupt okay. you, but the idea of domesticating these laws yes. is to find a way within the local scene exactly. that will allow the adoption of yes, these of this of law. Act, this even law, even so. sometimes, um, you know, you can still. Um, make some changes in order to suit exactly. your environment. So, yes. What do you think is holding back this? I mean, aside from the culture, is, since the, the law provides that you adopt it in a way that's suitable to your environment, yes, yes. what is the thing that is stopping these people from doing What's it? What's the challenge, obviously? The challenge, it is their culture. 
There is nothing we can argue this back but and forth. But the Constitution forth. It is supersedes the, the whatever Constitution supersedes. You know, the greatest battle, culture. the greatest battle of this life is in the mind. Is in the mind. If you can convince a person in their minds, like I was saying, you said you didn't work, and then you went to your auntie's house, and then she made you. In your mind, you see yourself suffering. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what anybody else is telling you. Now, I I'm sorry to say this. Go to Sabo. You see these little, little girls, they're already wearing makeups. Your securities in your house, most of them have wives of 13 years, already having babies. They don't allow them to come out. Ask them, if you, if you are friendly with them very well, ask them, are you married? They will tell you they are married with children, irregardless of their ages. Beautiful girls. So now, now that these, we are girls, okay. these girls, they, they, they were told by their own mothers that at the age of 19, you have to start looking for a husband. Yes, yeah. and now, why is it that I cannot come? Because we are, poli we are advocates, we've been trying to get it in the minds of these people that this thing is wrong, but we come in and we are backed into the corner because these people have a culture that you just cannot... What about criminalizing it? Because it's you see, criminalized it's criminalized already. already. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I, I, <laughs> you see, we have loads of laws just lying and yes. gathering up dust. Mm -hmm. Implementation is yes, the problem. Mm -hmm. What if we, in these parts start criminalizing it because you see the people in those parts who are saying it's their tradition, it's their culture, if they're, because they don't just remain there, they have people living here. Yes. If we start criminalizing it in these parts, maybe it might send you know, a, a message but I don't know the advocacies Thank that are going much. on. Criminalizing are something. About? Criminalizing something means that there must be someone who makes a complaint. Exactly. Now who's going to make the who complaint? Is, the woman? Mean? Our daughter? Our, yeah. our own mother? Those who have you, we, we've spoken to several of these mothers and they are telling us, what do you want their children to be doing if they're not getting married or if they're not working in the family? Well, what about the issue of this, is it VVF now? Yes. We'll get when to that. I, I don't, she she wants to say something. That. We'll get yeah. to this. We're, we're getting distracted, but let's, let's just, we're, we're talking saying, something that's You know, important. there are some people that want to put this in law or want to enforce it. So ask me, what is their own belief system about what we're talking about? Yes. So that is the problem. You want someone to do something, but the person who actually wants to enforce it is still part of the same yes. thing. Legislation is also a problem. Yeah. So because, I'm sorry to say this, you find a lot of them up there who are getting married to these young children as well. Yeah. So do you want them to make or pass a law that will still that will be them? against them? Okay, so now that we are in an election okay. period and the campaigns are in, that's the question I asked you yes. earlier. Do you think that the campaigns have any provision for the child? We know of the women, they say they want to give them some percentage. We know they want to talk about the economy, they want to talk about the youth. But in all of these campaigns, have we heard, or do you think that their manifestos covers for the child? I haven't seen anything other than education on most of their manifestos. I haven't seen anything that is talking about protecting a child yeah, you know, you're supposed to give a child basic education. You're supposed to feed, give a child good water supply. I haven't really seen anyone that is really, really going in depth. Into, yes, yeah. in depth no. into these things. You hear them talking about, okay, education. Yes, already education is free, but what's the quality of this free education? But how can these people give you what you're not asking for? I'm not saying, but the advocacy is for these you know, kinds of rights, because it doesn't end with education emotionally, you know, and all of that. If we don't have that much outcry, I tell you what, 2018 is the most year I've heard about all kinds of sexual yes. offenses, <laughs> children, two-month-old mm -hmm. babies being harassed mm -hmm. even by their parents. Mm -hmm. if, we're not, if we only shout about it when it happens and then we go back to sleep, why should the politicians care? I'm wondering, you're, you're supposed to be one of those advocating yeah, for it. I'm a child protection advocate, the certified one at that time. We like to go through grassroots because, we, like she said, you need to change paradigms. If you, can't, if you can't change, change paradigms, mind. change mindsets, even if they pass it into law, some people will still do what we call the silent yes. technique. People yes. will keep silent because they don't see it as a big deal. We, we wanted to talk about VVA. People don't see it as a big deal. It happens to all their children. But you see, those girls, I have done a documentary years ago, maybe almost 10 years now, on Vestic, um, VVF. And most of the girls who were victims would tell you, once that happens, they kick them out of the home. Yes. They start calling them names. They're, yeah. witch, they're witches. Yeah. They're stinky and all of that. But they fail to recognize that it's because their bodies were not prepared for those babies. Yes. And this is the resultant effect. So again, the issue of education comes in. I'm not talking about paper education, but awareness, orientation. 
Uh, There's another issue I need to, it's on the topic that I want to bring out that we need to also discuss, is the conflict in the 1999 constitution that is even given, um, it's about child marriage. Like a loophole? Yes, that is, that is like a loophole. Okay, so section 30, um, section... Is the age of consent? Thank you. Uh, that yes. is put at 11. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It mm -hmm. says it's that any person who, who marries under the age of 18, the marriage is null and void. According to Matrimonial Causes Act, mm -hmm. it's null and void and to no effect. So the marriage is empty. But now Section 20... Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the numbers. Section that one is not talking about the fact that any person who is any a married person is regarded as um, an adult. Yes, is on is regarded as a person under the legal age. Is mm. yes, is recognized. So how do you it's deal with those two? This so, is yes, what so I want. Mm. This if you're this, 13 and you get married, the law sees you as a responsible person. Yes, yes. So are we pushing this conversation? In, I, mean, in, I mean, this is a time to put it out there. Yes, so exactly. You can actually this is pay what, attention. This is what I are want us to put enough? out there. Are we doing enough in your capacity, NGOs and stuff? What are the issues you are putting forward to these politicians who are campaigning for votes at the grassroots, like you said? How are you using this election period maximally to ensure that the people at the grassroots understand these issues and bring it up when these politicians come to campaign? Okay, we do a lot of advocacy. We go to schools, we go to rural areas, we, we bring people together, people like mechanics, organizers. We are trying to enforce child protection. We want them to understand what child protection is first because some of them don't think it is their responsibility to take care of their children. Once they give birth, 10, 11 children, everybody should find their way. Anyone that wants to come back will come and take care of them. That is so what about, mentality. I mean, as a, as a little girl, I knew about SFH at a little age. So I knew what family planning was about because it was taught in schools. We had Society for Family Health come to schools to educate you that you shouldn't have more children that so you can handle. So what kind of school did you go to? I went to a missionary school. <laughs> it was a government school. <laughs> but you see... Th you see, things have changed. The, mm. the, like you said, there's been a paradigm shift. We no longer are giving our all to these advocacies because I knew at that age that you, I could not have more children than I can I could take, 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 of, take yeah. care of. Yeah. And thank goodness for the likes of um, Onye Kanwino and um, what's his name now? Sonny 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 Ade for that yeah. song that was, you know, <laughs> talking about family planning. Family planning yeah. So if we cannot at least sway these people from their traditional and religious beliefs, how about telling them about the health implications, you know, implications of having too many children. Maybe we start from there, and then we can deal with not sending your children off to some place that they might be abused we once had a, or trafficked. We, once, we did a research on this family planning thing. We're trying to implement it to you know, rural women who are having too many children, and their belief system came up to play again. They said it's demonic. <laughs> yeah. When we had like um, 500 women, we did research on 500 women, and like 85% of them said it's demonic. Not to have many children? To have all those things in, in the system. To wow. stop? To um, stop children that children. God has given you as much, you know, you can have as many children as you want. Because it's and, God that kept it there. Of course, some religion talk, also, like you talked yes. about culture having a role to and play. And then talk about this. polygamy. Mm -hmm. your, your rival has more children. So, so you definitely maybe have then to have some more. people believe that the more children you have, the wealthier you become. The more well, what about the wherewithal to, to take care of these like children? That. Some of these children have, they have to go zero one zero, <clears throat> sometimes zero zero zero. They they have to go to, into the streets. I mean, I've seen a child that is maybe seven, you know, even younger. You even know, younger. walking the streets. That's what I was trying to tell you. They are not giving birth to take care of them. They are giving birth because they can give birth. So they are two different So in traffic, things. you're seeing these kids. I, my heart goes out to them. I'm tired of giving money, so I don't give any money more. I ask, where are your parents? Because these children are here, fend for their parents. Mm -hmm. So these monies we give to them, mm -hmm. they take to their parents. So mm -hmm. this is some form of labor and trafficking. So you bring your children from wherever and dump them in traffic, go get the monies. What are we doing about picking up those children up from the streets? You're a lawyer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, because we have well, to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. yes, the fact yes, that they're still are, on the street and yes. nobody's doing anything. By the time a parent notices that five of his children are missing and they're waiting for him to come to jail, uh, to the jailhouse and, you know, sign some papers, they will all run away. They'll stop. So what are we doing about that? Okay. So uh, we have juvenile um, facilities. Centers, yes, mm -hmm. facilities that take care of these children that they pick from the streets. And then, you know, most of them are even homeless. 
So, you know, by the time they bring them in, they run away again. You know, like I said, the greatest battle of this life is fought in the mind. You, you take a child and they see, oh, that place, they just want to carry you away and everything. They run away. So, you know, you are unable to particularly help them anyway. So, it's not as if the government is not doing anything about it. It's just that the people you are trying to help, how willing are they to be helped? Okay, so... So we were talking about this earlier, like the campaigns and the yes. purposes. What are you, I mean, how are we going to galvanize conversation so that these politicians become aware of this? Are any of them talking about the age of consent? These are some of the issues I was expecting that you would put some light on. Yeah, um, like what she has said, I've not seen, because I've been following all the political things and all that, and I've been so passionate, I've been trying to listen to any of them talk about children, but it's so unfortunate that none of them have even mentioned So if, if they should, anything. if yeah. they should, what are the areas you think that they should pay particular attention to and maybe push for the law and look for strategies? That's what they, part of what they do. Yeah, Aside from the home the that we'll be talking about, what are some of the things that they should be looking at to focus on, on the Child's Rights Act? I think two major things for me. Education for the children first. They need to, to an extent, detach them away from this mentality that their parents have. Then the parents themselves need empowerment in a way. Because when a, a parent is empowered, it will be a bit detached from the children. Like what she said, that they keep pushing those children outside, you know, to get money or to you know to fend for themselves so when they are being distracted they get jobs for them or you know or everything something is just to keep them away from these children then the children too should get basic education regardless then when we are talking about basic education good education then there are some things that need to be inculcated in the curriculum like mental health for me for instance like what she has mentioned um sex education there's nothing like that in our in, in our education because child labor child trafficking I, at the end of the day, will cost And some child of these abuse. children who are selling at, on the streets late at night, they're uh, you know, open to all kinds of abuses <coughs> yes. and, and yes, their lives can be abused. Yeah. 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 Child trafficking. Hmm. Okay, could you share your thoughts as well before we wrap off this segment on okay. child labor and abuse? Okay, for me, what I want to see is the amendment of the constitution. It needs to be revisited again. Let's revisit it and let's talk about not only the age of consent as far as marriage is concerned, but what protection is being given, especially to these areas where the culture. You know, look at the ch female genital mutilation issue. Mm. Because so much noise has been made about it, so many states are turning away from it. Mm. It is, it can be done. And this is what I want to hear my candidate talking about. What is your plan as far as um, child marriage is concerned? What is your plan as far as health? of a child, the mental and physical health of a child Even is concerned. It's not just the education. In fact, I feel that everyone will still be educated at some point. Mm. There is no way you will not get your knowledge one way or the other. It doesn't mean you have to go to school. Some people go to learn trade mm. and they become uh, useful members of the society. Mm. Mm. But what are you going to do about their health, especially when most of them are dying? Some, some of them, they sell in Oshodi, they get raped at night. You know, they get young girls who are not even supposed to be exposed to stuff like that. Mm. But because of the poor, the poor social facilities available, mm. you know, that's my thought. That's what I want to hear my political um, aspirant talking about. Well, we want to thank you, Bukola Akinwale, legal practitioner, for speaking with us. Bukola Lamid, family to life Bukola therapist. Today. Thank you so much. It's a lucky coincidence. Thank you, thank uh, I think you. what we want to hear more is you people, and when I say people like you, activists and lawyers, people who are advocating, in the forefront of these um, meetings and town halls, asking those questions to those candidates, whether it be in your constituency, in your local government, in your state, even at the federal level, maybe they, we could put them on the spot and see what they have to say. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks once again. We'll take a short break. We'll be back. Stay with us. <laughs>